Today's topic of discussion is cholinergic system 2. That is the pharmacology of the cholinergic system. Hi, Dr. Shahnaz Malik here and welcome to Pharmacomania. So here is the classification of cholinergic agonist or cholinomyometic or parasympathomyometic drug. It can be divided into directly acting cholinergic agonist or indirectly acting cholinergic agonist. Directly acting drug act by binding with parasympathetic receptor. They are nicotinic and muscarinic receptor. These drugs, these all drugs bind with that receptor muscarinic as well as nicotinic and stimulate that receptor. So it is called directly acting and indirectly acting drugs which doesn't bind with the receptor but it inhibit the destruction of the acetylcholine or hydrolysis of the acetylcholine by inhibiting anticholine ester inhibiting acetylcholine esterase so it is called anticholine esterase drug so it is called anticholine esterase drug so here is the directly acting cholinergic agonist are cholinesters and alkaloids. So in cholinester, acetylcholine is the naturally releasing neurotransmitter and we cannot use as a therapeutic purpose because it destroyed immediately after releasing. So methacholine, carbacol and methanacol, they mimic the action like acetylcholine. They are meth methacholine, carbacol and methanacol. These all drug bind with the receptor and act like acetylcholine. Now alkaloid group. Alkaloid group muscarine, pilocarpine and ericoline. These three drugs are from alkaloid group. Now directly acting cholinesters are acetylcholine, methacholine, carbacol and bithenacol. Acetylcholine is the prototype drug and naturally uh, releasing neurotransmitter. It cannot be used for the therapeutic purpose because it's immediately destroyed by the or hydrolyzed by the enzyme. So its half-life is very short and cannot be used as the therapeutic purpose. So on other way, uh, drugs, other drug like methacholine, carbacol and bithenacol. Uh, so methacholine and carbacol are obsolete. So they are not used but bithenacol is resistance to hydrolyze by tocolinesterase as well as pseudocolinesterase. So its half-life is long and it is mainly act on the muscarinic receptor, particularly urinary bladder and GI tract. But it is devoid of the nicotinic effect. Directly acting parasympathomimetic drug like methacholine, carbacol and bithenacol Methacholine and carbocol are obsolete, so bithenacol is only available in the market and its use are post-operative and postpartum uh, neurogenic bladder or post-operative or postpartum paralytic ileus. So in this both condition where the smooth muscle are relaxed at only of bladder or atony of the GI tract. So in this both condition we can give pithenacol. So in acute retention of urine 2.5 milligram of pithenacol can be injected subcutaneously when in chronic cases 10 to 15 milligram of drug can be given orally with daily meal. In GIT atony, atony without obstruction to expel gases from intestine before radiological investigation or to revert the post-operative or postpartum paralytic ileus of the gut, the drug can be given orally in a dose of 10 to 20 mg three times a day or to treat salivary gland malfunction like xerostomia. These are the various uses of bithenacol. Now, alkaloid group of the directly acting polynomiometric drug are muscarine, ericoline and pilocarpine. Muscarine and ericoline are not useful in the therapeutic purpose, but toxicity can occur due to consumption of this mushroom from the mushroom. In the treatment of mushroom poisoning, parental administration of atropine 1 to 2 milligram intramuscularly every 30 minutes. So, 
muscarine having their uh, cholinergic property so we have to antagonize by the anticholinergic drug like atropine Pilocarpine is the tertiary amine, crosses the blood vein barrier and had dominant muscarinic and mild nicotinic action. So, pilocarpine is too toxic for systemic use. So, it can be used locally. Now, directly acting alkaloid are muscarine, aracoline and pilocarpine. Muscarine and aracoline are not used as a therapeutic purpose. So, pilocarpine can be used for the therapy but in uh, systemic use it is very toxic. So, it can be used as still into the eye as a 0 0.5 to 0.4% 0 0.5 solution which reduces intraocular pressure within few minutes to last for the 4 to 8 hours. Now, second use is the to counteract the mitriasis produced by the atropine and to break adhesion between the iris and lens. When iridocyclitis occur, inflammation of iris causes its stick uh, iris to the lens. So, to break the adhesion between the iris and lens, the pilocarpine and atropine can be given alternatively. And second use is the as a silo coach. Pilocarpine 5 to 10 mg orally can be used to stimulate salivary secretion in patient after laryngeal surgery or to treat the xerosomia resulting after radiotherapy. Now, second group of polynomiometric drug is indirectly acting polynomiometric drug. It also called as anticholine esterase. So, mechanism of action of anticholine esterase is it prevents the hydrolysis of acetylcholine by antagonizing the enzyme choline esterase that is present at the synaptic cleft thus increase the which inhibit the hydrolysis of the acetylcholine and increases the acetylcholine concentration and its action at the cholinergic receptor at both nicotinic as well as muscarinic receptors. So, this is the classification of the indirectly acting polynomiometric drug. These are reversible and irreversible. So, in this reversible group, there are two, again, this is subdivided into two groups. First is the carbamates and second one is the non-carbamate group. And first group is the physostigmine, neostigmine, pyridostigmine and devastigmine. Physostigmine neostigmine, pyridostigmine and rivastigmine. So, P and P R. Second group is adrophonium, tecrine, donepezil and galentamine. Adrophonium, tecrine, donepezil and galentamine. This is the reversible kind of the anticholine esterase. Second group is irreversible and irreversible group carbamate group and organophosphate group. So, carbamate group contain carbaryl, propoxer. Propoxer is the bagon which is used for the killing of cockroaches. And next group is the organophosphate group which is used for farming. Diflose, ecothiophate, melathion, diazinone. Diazinone is the T20 which is used for the killing of the rats. Taboon, serine and somen. These are the now agent and which are used in the use as chemical warfare agents. So, this is the mechanism of anticholine esterase. This is acetylcholine and it is hydrolyzed by the choline esterase. So, this uh, drug is inhibit this enzyme choline esterase to choline and acetate and acetylcholine remain at the site of the action like at the receptor nicotinic as well as muscarinic receptor and effect is increases and effect of the acetylcholine or lifespan of the acetylcholine is increased. This is choline esterase enzyme which is having two sites an anionic site and acetylic site in process of degradation of acetyl Choline quaternary nitrogen bind with the anionic site and carbon acetoxic group bind with the hydroxy group of the asteric site of serine residual of the acetylcholine esterase. Now, 
this enzyme substrate complex is formed this enzyme this is enzyme and this is substrate complex is formed now cleavage of this substance enzyme substrate complex at the asteric site link cleavage of this link at the asteric link cleavage of the asteric link with degradation of the choline so with degradation of the choline so this part is the choline and this is acetylated remaining part is the acetylated as acetylated enzyme react with the water this acetylated enzyme react with water to regenerate active enzyme to regenerate active enzyme so this is um, choline group and this is the acetylated enzyme group acetylated enzyme group act with the water to regenerate the active enzyme this is the now this is the active enzyme reversible anticholine esterases are carbamate and non carbamate carbamate group is physostigmine neostigmine pyridostigmine and rivastigmine non carbamate group are adrophonium tecrine donepezil and galantamine now reversible anticholine esterases uh, having similar structure to the acetylcholine they combine with uh, anionic as well as esteric site of the acetylcholine esterase enzyme and form the complex and this complex is less uh, readily hydrolyzed than the acetylcholine and acetylcholine esterase complex so in this process uh, it temporarily inhibit this acetylcholine esterase enzyme and it uh, uh, give time to prolong action of the acetylcholine at the synaptic cleft so regeneration of enzyme this enzyme is takes time and this time will provide it to the acetylcholine at the to act at the synaptic cleft so tecrine and atrophonium are the shorter acting anticholine esterase enzyme because it uh, bind with the esteric or anionic site of the um, anticholine uh, choline esterase enzyme with very weak bond when uh, uh, intermediary acting are carbamates are bind with two site anionic as well as uh, esteric site of the enzyme but phosphate is irreversible and it bind with the acetic site of the enzyme with covalent bond so to remove this phosphate from this enzyme is difficult task so to remove it bind with the acetic site of the enzyme now we have to diffuse this enzyme we have to introduce pump this is the pralidoxime it reactivate the enzyme acetylcholine esterase by attaching anionic site which uh, lies uh, vacant at the phosphorylated enzyme and uh, palm having quaternary nitrogen compound this oxime group will bind with will attract this phosphate group and phosphate transfer to NOH group of the two NOH group and OH group and form the enzyme phosphate oxime complex and from the phosphate this is phosphate and this is oxime co complex and diffuse out that phosphate group from the acetylcholine enzyme choline esterase enzyme and uh, regenerate the fresh or active enzyme now pharmacological effect of anticholine esterase is what are the pharmacological effect of anticholine esterase are various action on the various receptors like muscarinic action nicotinic action cns actions like production or um, pro, uh, produces a generalized altering response improved in the alzheimer's disease excitation convulsion respiratory failure and coma can occur only for lipid soluble anticholine esterases are physostigmine stigmine physostigmine is the only lipid soluble anticholine esterase so it can penetrate the blood brain barrier and it act on the cms 
now various uses of anticoagulant esterases first one is the as a meiotic in glaucoma it act as a meiotic and in, reduces the uh, intraocular pressure of the eye pore to reverse the effect of mitiasis like uh, um, um, atropine which is mitiatic agent and which is used to for the fundoscopy to revert the um, action of the atropine is longer so to revert the action of atropine we can instill um, anticholinesterases to prevent formation of adhesion between iris and lens due to inflammation of iris uh, sometime iris uh, stick to the or form the adhesion with the lens so it can be uh, break the adhesion by um, this drug in myasthenia gravis post operative or paralytic ileus or urinary retention post operative decurarization this drug can be used in cobra bite belladonna poisoning other drug overdoses like tricyclic antidepressant phenothiazine and many any antihistamine drug and in alzheimer's disease now carbamates esters so first one is the neostigmine it act on the nicotinic as well as muscarinic receptor and uh, its kinetic is uh, uh, half life is 0.22 to 2 hour and it is polar it can be used in treatment of myasthenia gravis paralytic ileus urinary retention curare poisoning and cobra bite these all are uses of the neostigmine now physostigmine physostigmine is the lipid soluble and it can penetrate cns so cns effect will be there nicotinic as well as muscarinic action and it can be seen in the cns also half life is 0.2 to 2 0.5 to 2 hours it is lipid soluble it can be used in glaucoma as well as atopic toxicity pyridostigmine it is used in uh, action is on the nicotinic as well as muscarinic receptor 3 to 6 hour and it is polar it can be used myasthenia gravis treatment so now myasthenia gravis what is myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis is autoimmune disorder in this condition weakness of muscle can occur so what is the pathophysiology so availability of acetylcholine is there but there is some kind of antibodies present at the nicotinic receptor so nicotinic receptor are not able to bind with acetylcholine and not function properly so weakness of the muscle can occur in this condition now how will you treat myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis is the autoimmune disorder acetylcholine is present available at the synaptic cleft but due to antibodies are present at the nicotinic receptor and acetylcholine is not able to bind with the nicotinic receptor and destroyed by the acetylcholine esterase enzyme so neostigmine and pyridostigmine is the drug which inhibit the acetylcholine esterase enzyme and increase the lifespan of acetylcholine which can uh, help to increase the activity of nicotinic um, cholinergic activity second drug is the immunosuppressant which are corticosteroid like prednisolone azathioprine or cyclosporine these all drug are immunosuppressant drug because myasthenia gravis is autoimmune disorder so this drug can helpful in this condition plasma phoresis can done or thyroidectomy is the permanent solution for the myasthenia gravis now myasthenic crisis and cholinergic crisis both the condition are different but symptoms will appear similar so how will you decide which crisis is there so let's see a result in myasthenia crisis the result of the disease exacerbation or uh, precipitating event most commonly is a Uh, uh, respiratory infection it is severe generalized muscle weakness with respiratory and bulbar weakness patient may develop respiratory compromise failure in cholinergic crisis caused by over medication with the cholinesterase inhibitors severe muscle weakness with respiratory bulbar weakness and patient may develop 
respiratory compromise and failure so both symptoms are similar but pathology are different so this is the cholinergic crisis where sweating lacrimation running nose vomiting pin point pupil frothing at the mouth due to salivary as well as bronchial secretion bradycardia urination defecation like symptoms appear due to cholinergic toxicity toxicity organophosphate is the use in the farming as a insecticide so in the toxicity of the it can be accidentally as well as suicidal so what are the symptom appear due to this toxicity so in all our secretion will increase like uh, irritation of eye lacrimation salivary secretion sweating co uh, copious bron uh, tracheobronchial secretion eye meiosis pinpoint pu pupil and blurring of vision in lung bronchospasm breathlessness heart severe bradycardia hypotension can occur in git increased git motility cramps and diarrhea can occur colic involuntary defecation and urination can occur cns symptoms are convulsion coma respiratory failure can occur initial twitching of the skeletal muscle and then muscle weakness and paralysis can occur due to organophosphate toxicity so these are the manifestation of excess cholinergic effect these are the organophosphate poisoning can cause excess cholinergic effect it is like dumbbells dumbbells d means defecation u means u mean urination and meiosis pin point pupil is the diagnostic feature of the cholinergic crisis b bradycardia e emesis l for lacrimation and l is for salivation it is the dumbbells now management of op poisoning so how will you manage this organophosphate poisoning patient first of all general support and care should be given to resuscitate and maintain the vital function of the patient terminate for the exposure or decontamination of the patient prevent absorption of the uh, drug from the intestine or ingestion of the poisoning hasten elimination symptomatic management and specific antidote can be given for as a therapy treatment of organophosphate toxicity first of all support respiration atropine to block the muscarinic and central action 2 mg intravenous repeatedly every 10 minute till dryness of the mouth and other sign of atropinization can appear till we have to give the atropine then choline esterase reactivator is the oxime these both atropine and oxime these are specific treatment for the organophosphate poisoning or organophosphate toxicity oximes pralidoxime or pam the phosphorylated anticholine esterase react very slowly or not at all with water however if more reactive hydroxy group in the oxime form are provided then reactivation occur more than a million time faster so we have to provide pralidoxime after atropinization of the patient what are uses are intravenous low in a dose of 1 to gram followed by 8 to 10 mg per kg per hour continuously infusion till recovery another regimen is 30 mg per kg iv loading dose first one is the loading dose 30 mg per kg iv followed by 8 to 10 mg per kg per hour continuous infusion till recovery thank you for watching the video we'll see myasthenia gravis and organophosphorus poisoning in detail in different video thank you very much